But let's continue with the word, I am building. That's our theme for the month. And we are six down, one to go. Amen. We have been dealing with the um, seven pillars, okay? The seven pillars uh, that God is raising in his house to build. And we have already touched on, let's do a quick recap for those who are not here. Number one, we said we have. We said we have. Must we start the series again next week? We said we come on class. We said we have. pillars. See, we said prophetic pillars. Number two, ministering pillars. Number three, teaching pillars. Number four, exhorting pillars. Number five, O Tuli le umcha luguti. Nzosugu utin kunjubab kumbi. Nzosugu ngakbi zuma wetu. <laughs> Amen. So today we are dealing with the leading pillars. The leading pillars. Number six. Yes. So let's go to Romans chapter number 12 uh, from verse number six through to eight. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality. And then it says, he who leads with diligence. He who leads with diligence and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, When it comes to leadership, we've got to understand that as God's people, we are all called to lead in one way or the other. You might be sitting, listening to me, and you are saying, Bamfundis, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to be a leader. I just want to be an ordinary person and follow. Yes, I agree with you. In some places, you will be a follower. But there are some places, some areas where God is expecting you to take a lead. That is what the Bible means when it says in Deuteronomy 28 that you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. So if you are planning to be a husband one day, you must know that you are expected to, to lead. Amen. When you are... Uh, believing God to be a wife one day, you must know that there is, a, there is a leadership role that is waiting for you. And when you are a Christian and you are a member of a church, God also is expecting us to grow and mature so that we can be able to lead others. Are we together, Brother Lord? God is expecting us to take that leadership role. So God is looking for leaders in the church. God is waiting in anticipation for you and I to grow up, to mature, so that we can be used by him to become leaders and disciple other people, lead them so that they can know and understand God better. Are we here? Jesus made it very clear. He said, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And I do believe that some of those laborers are supposed to be leaders, those who are going to take a leadership role in the church, avail themselves to lead. And I'm sure uh, you know that, you know, part of our mandate as Builders Church is to lead because we say the acronym BUILD stands for beget, unveil, initiate, and, and to lead, to lead. And that's where at core the, the, the whole thing of discipleship is. You can never disciple somebody else unless you are leading them. Because they are supposed to follow you. Your disciples are supposed to be your followers. And that means you are leading them. So you and I are supposed to develop a godly desire to lead. A godly desire to lead. If there's one thing that God is allowing you to do in his church is to develop that godly desire. To say, I want to be a leader one day. I want to lead in the same way that when I came, I was led to Christ. I was led through different discipleship classes. I was led, you know, trained by somebody else, came, joined a department. In the very same way, I want to lead. Because the last 
letter of build is delegate. So what do we mean by that? It simply means once you are led, you are going to be delegated so that you can also take that leadership role to lead other people. First Timothy chapter number 3 and verse 1 says, this is a trustworthy saying. This is the New Living Translation, right? It says, if someone aspires aspires to be a church leader. He desires an honorable position. So if, if you are a child of God, if you are a member of this church, you know, you are challenged to aspire to become a church leader. You must aspire. It must be your aspiration. And of course, as I said, in a godly way. And I love it in the easy English translation, especially the second part of it, because it says, if you want to become a leader of God's people, it is an important work that you want to do. It is an important work. So leading in the church is very important, very much needed, very much, very much needed and very much required. In the New King James Version, it says it is a good work. So it's a good thing to lead somebody else. And it's more about the work. It's more about the function. Not so much so about the position. Amen. And the Bible says it is an honorable position. So my desire as I want to become a leader, it's first about the function. It's first about the work before it is about the position. So don't desire it as a position, but desire it as a function. And the, the position will find you later. As a matter of fact, you know, Choosing leaders in the church is easy in that regard to say you find people who are already leading and give them a position because they are already functioning in that capacity. But if you are waiting to be given a position before you can lead, let me tell you, you will wait until Jesus comes because leadership positions are for leaders who are functioning and operating as leaders. Are we together, Bazalan? So it should be every believer's desire to lead God's people, not out of envy and selfish ambition, but out of that conviction and understanding that God's people need to be led by godly people, by godly shepherds. Amen? People who have their heart for the kingdom of God. People who want to listen to, to, to the commandment or to obey the commandment of Jesus when he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, feed my lamb. In other words, lead, disciple my flock. So if you want to belong to an iconic group forever, you are not willing to lead. So you are depriving others from receiving from the grace of leadership that you carry. Because you are, when you take up this responsibility to lead, you are going to activate your own grace of leading. And nobody can lead like you. You are wired differently. You are wired in a particular way. And I believe there is a position that you can feel in the way that only you can do it. Are we together, Bazalan? So we've got to develop that godly desire to say, God, challenge me. Mature me. Train me. Equip me. And as I follow somebody else who is leading me, may I use that time, you know, to my advantage to learn how to become a follower because you can never want to lead others unless you have followed somebody else faithfully. You see, once you are still belonging to an iconic group, do not desire to develop an ungodly desire to occupy that position and willing to follow this person until you are in charge. You see, you must be ready to follow somebody else, serve them faithfully. And by so doing, you are sowing a seed that by the time you are given the position or the responsibility to lead, you are going to reap a harvest of people who are going to follow you in the same way that you have followed. You cannot expect, it's like me as a pastor, I cannot expect you to honor me as a spiritual father if I have not honored my own spiritual father. I've got to sow the seeds of honor before I can reap the harvest of honor. So even you, once you are belonging to a team, even if you think you are better than the person who is leading, because remember, the race is not for the swift, the battle is not for the strong, but time and chance is given to them all. So when somebody else has been given and afforded the chance to lead, cheer them on, support them. Be behind them. Make them shine. Don't want to take their shine. Make them shine. What, what are you doing? You are sowing seeds 
So that by the time your turn comes, by the time your turn comes, you are going to reap the very same harvest. Don't want to topple people and go behind their back and want to, you know, draw people to you because you feel like you are the one. No, follow faithfully. So that by the time you lead, you lead from a pure heart. Are we together, Bazalwan? So, so we, we, we need to understand that God wants us to take that road to lead. Look, if you are not desiring to lead, you are sabotaging yourself. If you want to always be, because there are certain places or certain things in your life that you can't avoid. It's not a question of if you get married. You are going to get married one day and you'll be required to lead. Because once you have children, that's leadership. Parenting is leadership. Once you are a husband, that's leadership. Once you are a wife, that's leadership. Taking care of your household, that's leadership. You've got to learn to manage your home. Manage the affairs of your home. Especially if you are desiring to have more things, more resources, a bigger house, cars. That requires management skills. Leadership must be applied. And that is not for the faint-hearted. So practice while you are still single. Practice while you still live in your back room, one room, whatever. Practice and become a good leader. And for me, leadership is about, and there are many things that can be said, but I want to share just a few things uh, concerning leadership. For me, leadership is all about a life of excellence, advancement, and diligence. That is how I define leadership. It's a life of excellence, advancement, and diligence. And that you've got to start practicing and applying in your life. Because leadership does not begin with the position, but it begins with the life you lead. It begins with the life you lead. It does not begin with a constituency. You must not be given people to lead. You have you to lead. That's the first project of leadership, to lead you. And the question is, can you lead yourself? Can you lead yourself? You see, when you want to get married, your first primary assignment that you must embark on, the person you are considering to marry, you must check if they can lead themselves. Outside of you, can you lead yourself? Without a husband, can you lead yourself as a young woman? Without a wife, can you lead yourself? Without a job, can you lead yourself? Because some of us, you were not going to wake up early to get dressed and bath if you were not employed. So currently what is leading you is your job. Some of us, if you did not have a job, you would still be up and about on the streets. Because you are not leading yourself. Some of the qualities that are mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, in verse number 2, it says you must be able to rule yourself well. So can you rule yourself or are you also unruly towards yourself? You can't take instructions from yourself. If you want to wake up at 6, you disobey your own intentions. So can you lead yourself? I want to change this year. I want to stop doing this. Did you lead yourself to stopping to do 1, 2, 3, and 4? How much of a leader are you in your life? What kind of a life are you leading? Young man, young woman, start by leading yourself. Start by leading yourself. As a matter of fact, the purpose, the original purpose of dating, I know it was made, now it's made everything that is not meant to, to, to be made, you know. The original purpose is, is for you to have the assignment, the responsibility. So now dating has got nothing to do with no strings attached. I'm not committed to anything. I'm still watching you. I'm, I'm, if you are taking me out, the first date does not count. Because everyone in the first date, they are well behaved. They function from a manual. Just, just test them, you know. Phone them when you are around the corner. No appointment and say, can I pass by to say hi. Three in the afternoon. If they are not bathed, they have not brushed their teeth, 
then you've got something to be concerned with. There's no leadership there. You have a problem. Your kids are in trouble. Because you, you see how a person leads themselves. That is the same way they are going to lead your children. Can you appreciate a duplicate of your spouse on your children? So can you lead yourself? How much of a leader are you in your life? Is your leadership style linked to where you want to be and where you want to go? It begins with how are you leading yourself to produce umshato mush. Many, many marriages are destroyed because of the lack of self-leadership. There's no self-control. There's no self-ruling. You can't control yourself. Yeah. You see, that's a lack of leadership. Imali is leading you. You run away from, you must be reminded. You must be reminded. Electricity. You must be, and you took up that responsibility. You said, no, but you must be reminded to do the things that you said you are going to do. Ninety-eight percent of the time, I don't have to be reminded to buy electricity. By the time my wife says, "Oh, electricity is already on the machine," it's only once because I'm not perfect. It's only once where you know I'll say, "Please remind me." And sometimes later on, she says, "You said I must remind you," and I'm, I'm, but ninety-eight percent of the time. I'm the first to do it, 99% of the time. The first, I don't have to be reminded of all of my responsibilities. They are my responsibilities. I've got to lead myself. This is the kind of a person that I am. I've got to lead myself. Have you ever seen a person who says they are looking for a job? Right? They are looking for a job, but they can't lead themselves into finding a job. They are waiting for someone to bring them a job. They, they, don't, they don't have a readily available CV. That's lack of leadership. Have you ever offered somebody a job and say, I have a job for you, and then they ask you to print the CV for them? What kind of a leader of yourself are you? And if I wanted to make you a supervisor, it means you are going to ask me to look after the... But I employed you for that. It's a frustration to employ somebody to do something and you have to remind them to do it. Why am I paying you? Why are you here? Why can't you lead yourself? Do you have a schedule of waking up in the morning? What time to when as a person? What time do you sleep? What time do you wake up? Do you have a schedule of what you do over the weekend? Or where the spirit leads? You follow. All of a sudden, you're, yeah, the wind, yeah. Even if you said to yourself Sunday, but because at Figabangani, you can't control yourself and lead and say, Today I said I'm going to church. What is Papa of Lamesh? So say Limpopo Ivers. Because somebody said, ah, I'm going to say Abuya Manj. You must, the Bible says you must lead a life worthy of your calling. Because there's something that God has called you for. But the question is, is your, is your life, the life that you are leading, can it connect to the calling? Can it connect to the assignment that you have been given? Or your life and your calling are the two opposite things. So how is your leadership? In the Amplified Versions, 
version, Ephesians 4 verse 1 says, to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, that is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. A life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. So I want us to challenge ourselves in as much as God desires for us to become leaders in his house. But we've got to challenge ourselves and say, what kind of a life am I leading? God is not asking for perfection, but he's asking for effort. A for effort. That's all that God is asking for. How much of an effort are you putting to lead yourself? Or you're just going with the flow? What's your plan? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? What are your desires and aspirations? What kind of a family do you want to have? What kind of a marriage do you want to have? What kind of a future? You know, there are people who are so relaxed in this life. It's as if they are guaranteed of dates and times of what is going to happen in their lives. They are not leading themselves to nowhere. It's like you are so chilled. You are so chilled. You are 39 and you are so chilled. You are 39 and you are chilled. Something wrong, something is wrong with you. You are relaxed. As if somebody has assured you. Who is now 43, this is what is going to happen in your life. Who is supposed to come and lead you if you can't lead yourself? Where do you want to go? Where are you going? And what are you doing to get there? Ulinden. Ah, no. And you know, you're You can't lead yourself. You can't make decisions. You can't make permanent decisions. You, you are always on temporary basis. When are you going to be stable in your life? Where are you going to aim for something? Focus on it. And say this is where I am. And this is where I am choosing to stay. And I, this is what I am doing. Just one. You see Paul says this one thing I do. So what is this one thing that you are doing now? Let's years ago. You are too relaxed for my liking. Too relaxed. Too relaxed. You see, some of us, you have not been poor enough. Oh. Oh, okay. Send poverty. To, yeah, we send poverty to just provoke this person because they are too relaxed. Some of us, you must taste poverty to a point where you are going to say to yourself, I'm not going to rest until I deal with this spirit in my life once and for all. I'm not going to rest. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm, I'm going to break away because I don't want to see this in my children. I don't want to taste the smell of it. Some of us, you are too comfortable with being broke and poor down and out. Oh, yes, ang nan, ang nan, unamang. The way, the way that you are so relaxed. Ayi kolende ang nan, ang nan. You are too relaxed. Tumuntong ang nan, ang nan. You, you must get to a point where you hate it. That's why I wrote a book, Shunning Poverty. In other words, you detest it. You hate the smell of it. You don't like the way it looks like. Anything that looks like poverty, you crush its head. You chop off its head. You deal with it with every fiber of your being. That's leadership. You, you are too relaxed, too comfortable. You see, once you get to a point where you think, look, you, you, my friend, you are doomed. You are doomed. I said this before, I'm going to repeat it again. There's no man dead or alive that when you decide to do something with them through your gift, there's no man who can use you. No man. 
Why? Because as soon as you function in your gift, God, God you are making it God's business to make sure that nobody is going to take advantage of you. So don't spare yourself and think that because you will spare yourself. Uzukuke. To the grave, Uzukuku, by sparing yourself. Listen, listen, my friend. Listen here. Take it from me. I've, I've done favors for people while I was not employed. Having certain sets of skills. Doing things for people without expecting anything. One thing I knew was that I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for God. I'm trying to get God's attention. To say, God, this is what I can do. And, and, and I'm telling you today, I can pull in a favor from anywhere. From those people. And God has honored me for each and every favor that I've done for anyone. I used to do people spend hours trying to fix, even if I don't know how to fix this thing on their computer. But I will go and make a research. How do I solve this? What software can I get? Just so that I can make them happy. I know God's eyes are watching over me. I know that God is watching every move that I am making and he's collecting all of those seeds. I might not have money, but I will sow with my gift. I will sow with my brains. I will sow with my talents. I will sow with my sermons. I will sow with my writing skills. I will sow. I will help anyone. I will help anyone. Why? I'm sowing a seed. Even today, I'm still doing it. I was sharing, talking to another, another lady and I was saying to her, if I was charging last year when lockdown hit for every phone call I got from a pastor asking for advice, what equipment they can, can they buy? How are they going to do their online? If I was charging, I was going to be rich by now, but it will never defeat the fact that I was looking at them as seeds to say, I'll help you, men of God. This is what you need to buy. This is how you, I saved many pastors there's a lot of money last year. Wanting to buy expensive equipment, I will tell them, forget. Put that thing down. Go home. I'll tell you what you need to buy. Save you. Malga Jehovah. You don't need that. It's like you're buying a Porsche and you're going to pack it and cook in. Don't, don't, don't bother. I'll tell you the right things to do. Why? I'm sowing a seed. I'm sowing a seed for myself because nobody can take advantage of you. Nobody. Nobody. If someone uses you, that's why Uche Suwati. Pray for those who despisefully use you. What does he mean by that? You pray for you release them. You say, oh, why not you are use? What the enemy meant for evil, God will use it and turn it around for my good. Everything will work out for my good. Everything. Look, it's in the in the One day I, I, I did some work when I was, you know, hustling around. I did some work for, for the municipality here. Yeah. Trained principles, how to use computers. And when I was supposed to be paid for that, there were issues. You know, many things that were said, people wanted funny favors. And I said to that person, you know, it's fine. Don't, let's forget about it. God will sort me out. Let's forget about it. God will sort me out. Don't worry. I'll, I'll see to finish. What, what am I going to do? And I forgot about that thing. One day, I visited a home of a person who has the right to pay or not to pay. And I was visiting there for a different reason. Lo and behold, when I arrived, the same person who gave me problems about the payment was also sitting there. And I, I, was, I did not even say anything. And this one, as we are talking, he says, Hi, man, by the way, whatever happened to that project that you were busy with? I said, no, I finished it. Have you, were you paid for it? I said, no, that's fine. I don't have to be paid. He said, no, 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 no. When we agreed you were supposed to be paid for that thing, what's going on? You're supposed to be paid for that thing. Tomorrow morning, send the invoice. You are supposed to be paid. And I looked at the man. I said, what, 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 what do you say? Yes. And then, you know, I was saying it in my heart. I was not saying it to him. I just looked at him, wanting his approval to say, must I send it? He said, no, send it to him. He's supposed to facilitate. And tomorrow I sent it in. And a week later, it was paid. Nobody, nobody, when God watches over you, nobody, nobody, nobody will ever do you wrong. You need to tell yourself that. You need to tell yourself that. I remember I was in partnership with another friend of mine. We did business back in 2007. Multi-million rent business. 
in Boxback, electrical stuff. And when the calling was heavy on my life, I said to him, look, I'm going. I need to go. I, I can't stay here. The calling is calling me. <laughs> and I left. And he said, okay, here's a friend of mine. He's going to buy your shares and da-da-da. We signed the contract and everything when I was supposed to be paid. All of a sudden, a letter from the lawyers comes in. This whole thing is blowing on my face and everything. And I said to this man, I got the letter. I don't have the time and the energy to fight this thing. I don't fight like this. I don't fight through courts. That's not me. He said, my friend, keep them. Keep the shares. God will take care of me. God has been faithful in my life. I said, keep them. And I walked away. Where am I? I met him one day in Pretoria in one of the malls. I walked and I was like, Peter. And I said, oh, Jacob. Is that you? I said, yes. No, that's not the real name. I said, I said, I said, I said yeah, that's, that's, that's me. He said, oh, wow. how is it going with you? I said, it's going very well. It's going very well. God has been good to us, my friend. I'm still here. And you? <laughs> I don't want to tell you the rest of the story. Hallelujah. But God will watch over you. God, don't, don't waste time allowing people to whisper things in your ears. Be wise with the time and the gifts and the talents that God has given to you. That's the first seed you have. When you have no money, that's the first seed you have. As the first seed you have. As the first seed you have. When, when we took long and them to a take to go and set up, they did not ask me how much are you going to give us. That was not the question. The question was, Dalang, we can ask him fundis. Not mang it. Long, a take win in fana. He said, I mean a sangrate in fundis. Sangrit. Sangrit. Why? You, you, you are thinking seeds. Seeds are for the future, Baba. Seeds determine what will happen in the future. Seeds make you wake up tomorrow morning saying, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. They, that's what seeds are saying. Seeds are prophesying to you to say you have no business worrying about the future because at the right time, that's why the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing because in due season, in due season, you will reap. In due season, as long as the seed is on the ground. How are we together, Barcelona? I need to close. So, so you need to live the life worthy of your calling. Number two, we need to lead the life of excellence. You cannot separate leadership from excellence. The, the word leader in the Bible means an excellent thing. You've got to excel. You've got to strive for excellence. Anything and everything you do, whether you are still the tail, you are still the subordinate where you are working, you are still serving under somebody but seek to excel. Make sure that you, you strive for excellence. Take it a notch higher. Present the way that, you know, God wants you. Because if you want to be the head and not the tail, there's no room for mediocrity. There's no room to say, ah, I'm being casual about it. You need to always challenge yourself to say, I'm going to excel in my responsibilities. Excellence is not what you do, but it's the spirit you carry. It's the spirit that sits upon you. That provokes you to say, I cannot afford to do it just like anybody else. I've been given a chance and an opportunity by God. And what he is expecting of me is to take the little that I have and do my best with it. I'm not just going to present because I found them. I'm seven zini, but present I'll Google. I'll, I'll, I'll watch YouTube videos. I'll look at how other people are presenting. I'll visit boardrooms to introduce myself to that kind of a level so that I can operate and function at the highest level possible. And that's how you don't fight for positions. But you fight for excellence. Because you cannot hide people who are carrying the spirit of excellence. You cannot sabotage them. Because the spirit speaks for itself. The spirit of excellence will, 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 will cause 
kings and leaders and people of influence to reach out to them wherever they are, wherever they are hiding, wherever, wherever rooms, whatever room they are being locked inside. You see, if, if somebody is taking credit for the work that you are doing, M7 Zin, it's not your place for you to fight. It's not your place for you to make noise and say, oh, Konamanji, they are taking credit for my service. No, work your thing. Work your thing. Work your thing in your corner. Work your thing in your corner. The spirit of excellence will speak for you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 22, verse 29, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. If you are excellent, you will stand before kings. You are not going to stand before ordinary people, ordinary men, ordinary women, but you will stand before kings. There are leaders who are going to call out for you. There are presidents who are going to call out for you. There are people of, who, who have the power to decide things who are going to call out for you. Because of the spirit of excellence that you carry. Do you see a man who excels in his work? Report differently. Present differently. Speak differently. Practice that English word that you can't pronounce. Use the dictionary. Press play and listen to it over and over again. Until you are able to pronounce it. Why? I want to excel. I want to excel. Visit places that are going to shake your mind. So that there is no environment that is going to intimidate you. More busy report room. You have no business shaking. Ask. To say, can I see your boardroom? Sit and feel the chair, how it feels like. So that the next time you are called for an interview in the boardroom, you are not going to be intimidated by a long table and chairs. But you are going to walk in and own the room. So a man or a woman of excellence. Striving for excellence. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Ask questions. Ask questions. How do I carry myself at work? Study, study proper material. Study business English. There's English and then there's business English. You can't afford to communicate like a kulman umganuako. Find out how do I communicate in this world? How do I send an email? can use acronyms in an email. Hey, not to type SMS or your WhatsApp. Check yourself if you want to excel. Yes, I know some of us, we are working in an environment that is not favorable to you. But you are not called by God to maintain the status quo. To allow culture to absorb you. You are called by God to counter culture. To introduce a new culture. You are called by God. The Bible says we are called to diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Walk in with a different spirit. Walk in and cause every demonic spirit that exists in that environment. Cause it to be intimidated when you walk in. Because it understands. Look, Daniel functioned in an environment that was not favorable for him. It was foreign to him. But the Bible tells us that he refused to partake of the king's delicacies. He did not desire the way they did things in that kingdom. He said, I'm bringing in something fresh. He knew the spirit that was upon him, the spirit of excellence. The Bible says in, in Daniel chapter number 5 verse 12, In as much as the excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining en enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, it says. And he will give the interpretation. Let Daniel be called. Why? Why? Why call Daniel the spirit that is upon him? So in other words, it shall be even upon my life when I carry the spirit of excellence. Let Jacob be called. Let so and so be called. In other words, I don't have to force myself. I don't have to push myself. The spirit that is upon me will have me called. Broad rooms will call for me. People in high positions of power will call for me. Why? The spirit of excellence. Because people know that when I do something, I do it well. When I do something, I apply my mind. When I do something, I throw my all into it. When I do something, I don't spare myself. It does not matter who am I doing it for. It does not matter who has invited me. But I do it the way that I know how I do things. Just a couple of weeks ago, somebody 
you know, asked me a favor. They were doing this thing on Facebook and they said, please, if you can also be part of it, record a video for us, just, you know, a short message to encourage other people and stuff. And, and you know, uh, and, and many people came before me, you know. So I went and watched how, how other people are doing it because I wanted to get an idea of what this thing is all about. I said, okay, uh, I see what they are doing, but I'm going to do it like I do it. I'm not going to change and lower my standard because of how I saw others do it. And by the time I sent the video, the lady replied and said, oh my goodness, if excellence was a person, it would be you. I said, that's me. That's how I do things. And guess what? It's excellence to her. That's who I am. It's normality to me. Because that's how I do things. Don't lower your standards. Because we had no business changing the Hillcrest campus. The hall was ready to be used as it is. It was ready to be used. Why? We said we don't do things like that. That's not us. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. When I sent the video uh, 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 to the elders, one of them, I, I think it, it was Pastor T who said, the, you know, the, I, I, I like the builder's touch. Because you, you must not be lost. When you see us online, by the time you get here and you see the room, you must now, it must say amen to you that I'm at Builders Church. Even if you saw online the Delmas campus and you go to Pinoni or you go to Hillcrest, why are we doing that? That's us. That's how we are wired. It's excellence or nothing. It's excellence or nothing. There's no option B. It's excellence or nothing. If we can't excel in it, let's not do it. Let me close. It's the life of excellence and advancement. And that speaks of progress. There must be some form of movement in your life if you want to lead. You can't be a leader and be stagnant. You can't be a leader and be stuck in one place. Because if you are stagnant, it means you are not growing. And if you are not growing, you are busy dying. If you are a leader, it implies that you are on the move. Because someone must follow you. So if you are not moving, what, what is it that they are going to be following? Where were you last year at this time? Is there any movement in your life? Or are you stuck in one place? I'm not talking about did you get a new job. I'm talking about are you on the move? Are you growing? Are you moving from glory to glory? Are you, do you know better than you knew? If you are a musician, are you still playing the same way like you did last year? If you are a preacher, are you preaching the same way? How have you improved from the last time? You know, I want to be an entrepreneur. What has changed between last year and today? In your entrepreneurship, Mr. Entrepreneur, can you write entrepreneur? Can you spell it? Look, ma, I know many people will always encourage us and say, Karana my business, business. Listen, if you are not called to start a business, you have no business starting a business. Business is not for everyone. There's nothing wrong with working for someone else. Nothing wrong with it. Because now monthly business of fundamental was seven zero. So not all of us are called for business. Many people wanted to start businesses, but there's no progress. You have been hustling. Assess yourself. Examine yourself. What kind of progress is there in your life? Lastly, it has to be a life of diligence. When you are a leader, <laughs> you don't look at the time. A 
You don't look at the time. You don't look at the hours. You don't, you know. Hasn't Mfuna, Lento Msebi and Ziang Bambeze, and Fungu Pali business, Uguzen Zovan Escat. Shem, Mo Sebenza, Usebenza nine to five. Mona business, twenty four seven. If you want to be a leader, you don't calculate hours. You put in the hours. Every chance you get, you invest it into what you are doing. Many of us here at church, we want to be iconic group leaders. But this has a snaskat. How? But we are That's the greatest, I've, I always say this, this is the greatest mystery in the church that I've ever seen under the sun. That when we say to people they must lead or they must do something, then they say they don't have time. And when we say, let's put somebody else, then they take offense. So what are you doing with the position if you are not going to use it to accomplish the purpose? Do you want us to compromise the purpose because of the position? The position was for the purpose, not the other way around. Diligence is the order of the day when you want to lead. That's why many of us will never survive in marriage. Because marriage is work. I wash his eat. Are you clean? No problem when I solve and you know, told him to also seasonally. It's problem, problem solved. But to manage, I am a low oxygen. It's work. Oh, one of the moon to own oxygen got too anyway. It's work. Oh, one of the moon to quite easy lately. Um, sevens. Oh, one of the one of the cool. I am sevens. Can't you about you when Zanu? Marriage is work. Ministry is work. Business is work. Life is work. Life is work. If you are lazy, you'll be poor. If you don't want to put in an effort, you'll be broke for the rest of your life. Money is not for lazy people. The Bible says, he who does not work will not eat. It does not say he who is not employed. It says he who does not work will not eat. How diligent are you in everything that you are doing? Let's stand on our feet. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Say, God, make me a leader. Grant me the grace of leadership. Grant me the grace to lead a life of excellence, advancement, and, and diligence. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Shandorisa ki paludasia. I delibisia mandorili abasaka tedidiata. I delebe sombari andori di bia kapala bayanda. Mango lebe somberi di asoke palovre tu sheti di dia satadaba. Koringa mula mandeli ase. Mazendi milia kapandori dia soke parode sana. Let the grace to lead come upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the grace in the name of Jesus Christ to rule our lives well. To lead our lives well. Worthy of the calling. Let it come upon us and let it increase and let it multiply. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let, let the grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus of excellence. Advancement. And diligence. Let it increase and multiply in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Jetula masembra konti la masia. Mal kobetu rale vasken zeki dal panote zude. Zembelu kale bazumbre mendiri di asantere bezoya. Mazende li bakubra mangi diviase ke plagroti zede beza. Mazezi kapula vrate sheke teri di asandara basambra. Mandere de besombre kutari di asatere de besaya. I delebe sombaranda yese ke perede ya sote kupala brate zere de kesaya. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. 
We bless your name. Make us leaders. Make us diligent leaders. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Make us diligent leaders, O oh God. Make us diligent leaders. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you are in this room or you are watching online. And you are saying, Fundisi, I have heard the word today. But I'm not saved. I'm not born again. I've never made that decision in my life to commit to the Lord. I've never declared openly my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I've been coming to church. But today I want to make that decision to turn to God and give God my life. So that number one, he can save my life. And two, so that I can develop a, a true and a living relationship with him. And maybe you, you, you once made this decision, but somewhere down the line, something went wrong. And you disconnected in one way or the other from God. But today, you want to recommit and rededicate your life to the Lord. Whether in this room or online, I just want you, if you are in this room and you say, that's me, Mfundisi, please pray with me. I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus. Oh, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just raise up your hand nice and high so that I can see it and so that we can pray for you. God bless you, my sister, there at the back. If there's somebody else, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. And if you are online, just type and say, that's me. Just type in on the chat and say, I want to I wanna, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Pray with me. I want, I want to recommit my life. God bless you, my sister. If there's somebody else, please raise up your hand. Pray with me. And if you have taken that step, take another one. Take your belongings and make a bold decision and come to the front. Stand here on the altar so that we can pray with you to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. We are cheering you on because we are excited. This is the best decision ever. This is the best and the great decision ever. God bless you. This is the best decision ever. God bless you, man. God bless you so much. Come on, we can do better than that, church. Somebody is getting saved. Somebody is receiving salvation, the gift of eternal life. And even on the chat, say, that's me. We are cheering you on. And we are going to be praying for you. And let's stretch our hands over them as we are going to pray. And let me ask Pastor Tulani to come and lead them in prayer. Amen. And say this prayer after me. Uh, I want to believe that uh, that Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these, your children of God. We thank you for the grace in Jesus' name that has brought them. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Not because of us, but we thank you in the name of Jesus that the same grace will keep them. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that, O oh God, even as they give their lives to you, O oh God, you shall lead them in the name of Jesus. You shall be their shepherd, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that their lives will never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father, for change and transformation that will take place in their lives, in their families, O oh God, as of today. We thank you, Father, that you even teach them how to lead themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your name and we honor you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus, Barcelona.
Come on, build us church. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. Begin to celebrate. Hallelujah. Let's join with the heavens. Let's join with the heavens this morning and give God praise. Hallelujah. May God bless you. This is one decision that you will never regret in your life. And if online you prayed that prayer, please wait for instructions. Uh, wait for uh, somebody to give you instructions. Please, please, please be in touch with us. But for us, can we kindly follow this uh, beautiful lady? Uh, she's going to lead you to a room. Uh, you, we are going to find people there who are going to talk with you just briefly. Uh, please, whatever they say to you, take it and is oxisa. As you do that, Sis Lindy, when you go to Bali, especially Zandla Bazalon, even as they. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. Somebody cheered you on when you got saved. Do it for the others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. We are so excited for you. If you just said that prayer for the first time in your life, guess what? You are now born again. You are a child of God. We just want to say congratulations and welcome to the family of God. And even if you didn't say that prayer for the first time, maybe you said that prayer just to reconnect yourself with God. We just want to say to you, well done. And we pray that the grace of God will carry you and keep you. And I'm sure wherever you are, you are asking yourself that now that you are born again, what's next? Don't worry, we've got you covered. We kindly request you to follow the details that will appear on your screen and someone will be in touch with you immediately. May God bless you and we love you.